this. So just make sure you say that that's okay. Um, we had a, um, one of our authors was gonna give a presentation. She does uh, fashion portrait type stuff, but she had a, her son was getting a, an award tonight at school. So she had to cancel yesterday. So um, I just did a quick shout out to the community to see if anybody had any images they wanted help with or anything they wanted to you know talk about um, as far as that goes. So I had one person send me an image um, and I'm gonna, I wanna show you guys what I did too, because he also asked a question. He's not on the call. I'm not really sure what he wanted help with. In fact, I should probably double check the email that he sent me, um, which is somewhere, just so I can see what he said. Um, I thought I asked him a question, but he never got back to me again. So. Um, he took this shot in it from a tour bus in Dublin. He edited, edited it, edited it, <laughs> and changed it and changed the sky. But if, if you have time, I would appreciate if you could take a shot at it. If anyone knows what this building is, I would love to know what it is. So my first thing was, and I'm going to share my screen because people ask this kind. I I use Google Maps all the time to find locations and to. Um, so you should be able to see my screen, right? So I have I have Braidwood on the map at the moment, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. See that? <laughs> yes, yes, there you go. See, see that little that little Mildura right over on the left there. I'm going up near that. <laughs> oh, right here. Right there. Wow. Yeah. Sort it's of not way. quite that far, but yeah. <laughs> so I I just um, let me show you his image. So you can see what I um, look what I did so because first I was like i'm going to help him out and i'm going to try and tell him what building this is right, this is in Dublin i've never been to Dublin i've been to parts of Ireland, but not there. So my first thing that I see is the 1821 on the bridge so and this this could help people right like I use it when i'm trying to identify buildings if i'm out shooting in a city. Um, I try to take pictures of street signs or addresses on the doors of the buildings. But I don't always remember to or or at least the corner intersection sign, so I know where i'm in the general location of where i'm at. And then I go to Google Maps and I took this is how I found this I, I typed in 1821 bridge in Dublin. Ireland. And I got I got pictures oh actually that's not what I did is it okay hold on I love it maps. Yeah, I, I thought I was going to be in maps, but I went, I want to be in images. No, I, I think I did a general search first, just in Google. And then on then I went from there to photos, right? So then you go to images and I found this 1821 bridge that he, that he shot, right? So then I tried to figure out, I tried to figure out where the bridge is. So like, you know, I did a couple of like, you know, other searches. And it's called Houston Bridge in Dublin. So then I went to, I think then I went to maps. Um, where's my thing? Um, and I put in Houston Bridge, Dublin, Ireland. Right. So then it, it takes me to the bridge here, the Sean Houston Bridge. And I zoom in. And then I take my little guy down here in the corner that takes you to street views. And I place him kind of where I think, you know, he was. So this is the building in the image. So then I just, you know, make my way there and there was a bus in the way. The other time I did it, there was a bus in the way and now I've passed it. So it's this building, now I can't get there. Well, the other day I got there and I found out that it was the Houston train station. So Ooh. it's just a, right, it's like, an, it's, Something I don't think that people, for me, it's like second nature. So that building right there is what he was trying to identify. And this is the bridge that he was shooting. So I think sometimes it's, it's to me, it's second nature to go searching for stuff if I'm trying to identify, especially because I do a lot of architectural shots. Um, and I want to find out who the building is, who the architect was, the name of the building, the location, you know, whatever. Um, it's just a, it's just a pretty easy way to do that. If you have any shred of information like 1821 bridge. I mean, you know, from that I was able to figure it out. I don't know if I could have found anything else in this image that would have helped me. 
you know, that was obviously a big help. I don't see street signs. I don't see anything else. You know, um, it, it would have taken a while if you just do a random like Dublin search and start walking around Google Maps. But, um, you know, as long as you have some kind of information, it's not too hard to, to, to locate things and find things on Google Maps. It's also a good way to, to scout where you want to go to. So you know you can search via the image. Right. And you right. And that's that's another thing I could have done too. I if in fact if there wasn't 1821 written on that bridge, like that's that's another way to go to do it. If you have no information, yeah. Um, that would work too. Good point. I've never really done it with buildings per se, but I know I do it a lot with flowers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, to find so out what they are. I don't know what the yeah. flower is. I'll do a Google search on the right. image. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it works for all kinds of things, really. I mean, it, it's a good, it, yeah, Google's, it's scary, but it's amazing. <laughs> so I don't know what he really wanted help with here. I'm not sure if he replaced the sky or if this, he just made it show up a little bit better. It looks like it was very gray that day. Um, and you know, if it's Ireland, you know, you get what you get when you travel, right? So you don't, and you're on a bus, he was on a bus tour. So it's not like he had, um, you know, the opportunity to wander around and to get a different perspective or to get, get a different composition, um, you know? And I don't know, some people might question leaving in the lines, the electric lines. Personally, for me, I would leave them there because that's, that's the transportation system in Dublin. Right. I mean, I suppose it depends on the purpose of the image. Right. I have images from all kinds of places that have these kind of lines in them because that's how we got around, you know, and it's part of the story of my trips. Yeah. So I don't know. You know, I mean, Luminar Neo is pretty cool, and I don't know if it would re remove all of those lines. Um, if you really wanted to remove them all, you could. It would take a while. Um, I'm not that patient. So I, I personally wouldn't do that. I, I, think, I think when it comes to stuff like this, it's sort of mixed. Um, yeah. I get that all the lines yeah. detract from the image, but they are they are part of the story. So right, right, I mean, right, if you go right. either way, I mean, on something like this, I would probably go, eh, too many lines, I'll just leave them. <laughs> well, yeah, no, I would definitely do that. And like I said, it's where you are. That's what it looks like. You know, yeah. it's just it's it's part of the story of your travels and your your bus tour. You know, um, as for what else you could do with this, I mean, I I would probably lighten it up a little bit. Um, you know, it's a little bit like even just lightening wow. up just that little bit um, by in, um, opening up the shadows just a little bit, make a tiny bit of difference. You know, if you drop the highlights a little bit, or even if they, if you went in and did a sky mask I, and dropped the highlights in the right. sky, you'd probably get a more dramatic sky. Let's see what happens. So yeah, that's this is a pretty awesome new function in Lightroom Classic too, where it just selects the sky mostly. Okay. I can see it's got some of this too, but but then, like Julie said, then just drop the highlights a little bit of the sky to make it yeah a little so bit you know. Then you're gonna right, and you're gonna get a little bit more contrast between the sky and the um, yeah. building, you know. Um, I would I would probably add a little texture or details to. Yeah. I mean, I'm just doing a, a general overall. What do you call it? Uh, I can't think of the word. <laughs> um, global like i just global. did it globally yeah so you might want to just paint them like paint um create a new mask with a brush you know you might just want to do it kind of like on the buildings you know you don't want details because you don't want to bring in you know like this kind of stuff would be kind of cool with the details kind of brought out um and yeah i wouldn't do that necessarily but and then just do the texture or clarity, either one, depending on what you want to do, but texture doesn't affect um, the noise as much. So like if you just bring the texture up in those locations, it just brings out the details like of the building a little bit more, which is to me the the story here is this building. Um, and the, the 21 bridge is cool and the foreground and kind of is, you know, part of that story as well. So I, I mean, there's not a lot I would do to this, you know. 
especially taking from a bus. I mean, you know, when you're doing that and taking taking photos from tours, it's it's you kind of get what you get. It's hard to it's hard to um, you can't be too picky with what you end up with sometimes when you're yeah. doing that. Um, I mean, just the footage would have been nice, but yeah, like you said, right, you yeah. really get what you want. Right. Would you lighten up the white on the bridge? Or just leave it dirty look, looking over there? Down here? Yeah, the white. Um, it depends. I um I guess it depends too what you want to do. So you could. Um I'm just gonna use a brush because it's just quicker. Um you know, when I do my architectural stuff and I was thinking about showing you guys that, like, um, yeah, I mean, that helps too. It helps the foreground kind of pop a little bit to, to bring the white up a little bit there. Um, again, you know, it, a lot of times uh, for me personally, it depends on what my plan is for the image and how much I spend time editing it or not editing it or, you know, you know, do like we were talking about, you know, do you spend the time? And I'm just curious. I'm just going to do this because I'm very curious. Let's go see what happens. I want to see what Neo does to those lines <laughs> since we're sitting here because Luminar Neo has a um, AI, um, artificial intelligence. And all you have to do is click a button. Oh, we'll skip this version, huh? Um, to accept my my thing is in the way <laughs> um to, to get rid of so if you go to erase and then you go to remove dust spots or remove power lines i'm just going to see what happens it's it will be interesting because it will because uh, yeah i i don't i don't usually do it because i don't i try not to take power lines in my shots in the first place if i can help it but I do use this for dust spots all the time because I desperately need my camera cleaned. Ooh, um, yeah. But even that, it's not 100%, I have found. Ooh. So we'll, we'll see what this does. It's, it's kind of taken a while. I didn't, I didn't think it would take that long, but, but there is a lot. So maybe that's why. I'm waiting for it to just go poof magically. <laughs> It'll be gone. <laughs> Our lines <laughs> removed. Okay. So. It didn't do too bad, right? So there's still a little remnants here and here and in this piece. And then obviously it like, it took across whatever was in, you know, cause the lines were crisscrossing these antennas. But then what you can do is just take your, your eraser and, you know, erase the, re whoops, erase the rest. Okay, stop, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> All right, well, I'm just gonna do that. Then hit erase and it'll erase those. So yeah, that that's messed up because I messed it up, but you know, it it's not that bad. It, it did most of the work for us. How about that? That's probably the way to put it. And I'm not being very accurate here. So, um, you know, but that, that makes a difference in the shot though, it really, I mean, you know, so let me, let me save this and look at before and after. And again, I, you know, that's crappy because I was at, I don't know what I did. <laughs> Didn't pick up my mouse. <laughs> so that's the difference, right? That's before. And we did uh, obviously adjustments to this a little bit. And that's after it, with Luminar Neo, which does a pretty decent job. You know, mm. there was just a little bit of cleanup left to do. So not bad. It's like man. <laughs> I, it always amazes me those things. They just it just it floors me that that kind of stuff can be done. So that's that image. Hopefully that helps Patrick a little bit. Um, Patrick, if you have any more questions, just you know post in the community and um, we'll help you out with more if you need it. Um, one of our writers, Michael Rhino, posted he's has started doing some portrait work. He mostly does landscapes, um, wildlife type stuff, and he was doing headshots for a company and oh, I just accidentally. I was gonna say, what did you do there? No, if I, cause I, I rolled over my presets over here and sometimes they stick when you do that. Yeah, no, that was not. Uh, you so took a his, perfect 
perfectly good. No, book. right? It's it right. Something it's, creepy. <laughs> yeah, it was weird. Um, so his question here was he's and I can't. I'm not even the right person to ask these questions to with portraits, but um, he kept noticing how the light from the flash was really reflective on her lips because of her lipstick. Ooh. And this is oh, okay. after. So like he's fixed this. He took it and and dodged it, you know, burned it, whatever. And, um, you know, made it made it better than it was. But he still feels like, you know, he wants to know. He asked if there was a way to do that, like when you're on the set. You know, and I'm like, uh. By I mean, feathering his light a little more, but it, yeah. it, it depends on, yeah, I mean, depends on where the flash is placed. So if it's like an on camera flash, then there's probably not a lot he can do apart from maybe bouncing the light off the ceiling a bit more so it's kind of without knowing how his lighting was set i'm assuming it's a i'm trying to see if you can tell like in her eyes like it looks like there's a light like an octobox yeah. or something up there yeah that would be then where, yeah and then there's a reflector on the if you if you right. zoom back in so there's yeah i'm there. assuming there's a reflector there and right. then a soft box behind him so right um yeah i mean in camera it's just a matter of feathering the light um double diffusion i find on my soft boxes helps okay so i've actually got a diffuser that's in the soft box that's over the um light itself and then there's another diffuser that is over the soft box so um some people remove a lot of soft boxes come with two and a lot of people remove the one on the inside because i think it's just darkening it down too much but it is softening the light off a little more okay. um but yeah feathering it looks like it's right behind her if it was sort of more above her coming down but yeah clamshell for this sort okay. of portraits okay. is is good yeah okay but Thank apart from that. that, I mean, I I don't think it's it's that distracting. No, I don't I don't find it that distracting. The bottom lip maybe a teeny bit, but and it, I don't know if it's because he's done what he's done to it or if it, that's how it looked, you know. Yeah, don't know. I mean, he could try, you know, dropping the highlights a touch more, but yeah, right. I don't think it's that distracting. No, and and it, the other thing is we're like focused on it, right? So it's yeah, like yeah, we're, being we're very very aware I'm of it. Focused. Yes. Yeah. So. But I think, um, I mean, he could go in into her eyes and if he's really worried about that sort of thing and you can sort of blur the, the softbox reflections and things like that a little bit. But it's just something that you sort of, that happens really. Right, right. Um, and, and I mean, to me, this is a, a really good, nice portrait. I, I don't, yeah, you know, yeah. for especially if somebody who doesn't really do portraits very much, you know. If yeah, just well, like I said, them. it's, it's, you know. it's not really that distracting. We're just no. being focused yes, on, right, on, the, right. on the point. So, <laughs> so the Michael next will still love us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so the next one, I wish he would have sent me the other one because he said that he struggled and he only got one, like a maybe one or two decent shots. And and actually, the funny thing is, Brian, who's our editor um, and obviously a photographer, posted a, a like a a grumble the other day on social media about how taking portraits of people who have those UV coated lenses, which pretty much everybody has UV coated lenses these days or whatever they are, and they they turn out purpley, like a bluey yep. purple in in photos. So I'm like, Michael sent me this and I was like, well, there's there's no touch of color in this to me at all. Like, this is amazing to me. It's actually a really good shot of yeah. somebody wearing glasses. Right. There's always, he's, he's obviously um, worked really hard to get his light to a certain point that it's not reflecting back in the glasses, which right. is really, really, that's quite difficult to do. Right. Um, you know, it's it's the one thing that a lot of people often forget, especially when they, they don't do portraits a lot. Um, they often forget about that. You, and because you see it, you can see their eyes when you're in 
you know, yeah, right, in front them. of them, right? Yeah, right. and then it's not until you get back and you look at it on the computer and you go, right. "Oh man!" Yes. <laughs> then you're like, "How do I gotta fix that?" Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So no, I think he did really, really well. Yeah, I, and again, if I had, I wish I had one of the other images because I know what he's talking about. You know, because you, you, there's glasses have a coating on them, some, some of them, yeah. and they make it look purple. You know, in in um, photos. I have a nitpicky thing though, Mike. The hair. Like get this stuff off of her jacket. <laughs> it's tiny little details like that though. I mean, that's yes. that's a, that's a two second fix, right? Exactly, exactly. But, but like as a photographer, those are the things that I look for. Yep. And, and I'm not a portrait photographer. I, I took preschool portraits for like a year. So, but you learn to notice, you learn to notice those things, right? Those are the important things to notice. <laughs> You know, when you're when you're photographing kids, especially like, are their eyes runny? Is their nose runny? You know, do they have food on their like chocolate smeared on their right, right? They have leftover lunch on their face. You know, stuff like that 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 make a huge difference when you're trying to do school portraits. You know, yeah, the the parents are like not going to want that. You know, no, no, that's just a but that's just something to to think about too. Um, But yeah, yeah, I don't. I told him already he might want to you know maybe chat with brian about it i don't know if brian has a solution because he was complaining about it but um i don't know what people do with that reflective color that comes on some of the lenses but uh, I think glasses he's actually done yeah a really yeah, no i think this is amazing one. i mean her eyes yeah. are really in sharp and yep. you know and that's is... often that's also something else that's really difficult um is when especially if you're shooting at a really high aperture if you if your camera actually focuses on the glasses i don't have that yeah and not the eye then the glasses are super sharp but the eyes are slightly out of focus so you've got to make sure that you get the eyes in focus not the frames see now i just did that again something happened (laughs) (laughs) all i did was like hover over i just hovered over it and then it sticks it's a weird thing that happens with my Lightroom. I don't know. She was an alien for a minute. <laughs> so yeah, so I, I don't, um, yeah, I, I was pretty amazed by this shot when he said that, because like you said, glasses are hard. I, they're just difficult yeah. to shoot with on, you know? I, I try and convince awesome. people to take them off. <laughs> I, you know, it's, it's funny. I did a wedding, uh, an engagement session for a friend of mine very long time ago. And, and I'm like, you know, they're friends and they know I don't do that. And I was like, you know, can we, his were, um, the, uh, graduate, you know, like they go to, they turn into sunglasses. Oh, yeah, in the sun. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I don't want every picture of you're going to have look like you have sunglasses on and your engagement photos and you, you don't want that. Yep. You know, and, and he, and I'm like, why don't you take them off for a few shots? And they were both like, well, he never, ever not wears them. So that's not him. And I said, well, okay, I get that. But otherwise he looks like a raccoon every shot because his dark, you know, his glasses are dark. So that, that's just another thing to kind of think about when you meet people and talk to them, you know, if they have glasses. Um, even when you're pre, pre talk, you know, pre doing stuff, like ask them if they wear glasses or if they have graduated lenses or, tinted lenses or whatever and that way you could at least kind of know in your head and be prepared yeah. to figure it to figure it out or do some research ahead of time about trying to remove a purple tint from glasses that have a uv uh, mm. coating you know I, I read in some in some cases the photographers who have asked them to remove the glass from the frames ah right and and that way like you know but again like i i think that would chance breaking the glasses you know well see and and that's not always easy right because then you run the risk of not being able to put it back in and glasses are not cheap if they're prescription glasses people aren't going to be messing around with their glasses trying to like make the photographer happy (laughs) that might be something though that they could see if they could get a a pair of frames or something from an eye an eye place right possibly yeah possibly yeah it's interesting but yeah. Well, you can you can take a photo with them with their glasses on, then take the same photo with them with their glasses off. Right. Um, and you can sort of you know overlay them in Photoshop. But the thing that does annoy me about doing that is 
that most of the time people's eyes are actually magnified in their glasses. Right. So if you take a shot of them with their glasses off, you've got to make sure that you sort of like resize them the appropriate size. See, and I, I don't think that's something people would think about unless they're obviously doing portraits all the time and are used to that sort of thing. You know, yeah. but I think that if they are doing portraits all the time, that they probably already know how to not take the reflection in the glasses in the first place, you know. Yeah, it's tricky. It's tricky. But even, I mean, even other stuff, I mean, I've done shoots with like creative shoots where we've had sunnies on um, and I'm happy for them to be dark. Right, right. Um, but you don't want the lights reflected in them. Right. Right. Yeah, so it's it's a matter of moving them um, to get them out of shot. So right. yeah, it's um it can be tricky. So those are the images I have for tonight. I mean, I don't know if, if you guys have other questions about what we did, um, or if there's something else you want to talk about. I have another nitpick on this. Just as I keep looking at it, I'm like, make sure everybody's clothes are like like. See, this side is like that. And yeah, the side is like folded under a little bit. It, it's just little things, you know, but something and the necklace, some, the necklace looks crooked. Right. It should be more. See, ah, can't move my mouse over anything. Yeah, it should be a little centered here. Yeah, but it, it and right. That's the tiny little things. It's like make sure their hair is yeah. on their face or hanging in front of their eye or, you know, um, the more you're the more aware of the details are you are when you're taking the image, the less time you spend fixing them in post processing. And that's not just for portraits. The other you know. thing too, it's easy to pick nitpick somebody else's images. You don't yes. always see no. your own. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and if this, so like the other thing is too, right? So if he's not used to doing this, right? If I'm going to go do something that I'm not used to doing, I'm already like nervous. So I yeah. know I'm missing things. I know I'm probably missing something or I'm freaking out about something. So I'm going to be like, oh my God, I forgot to, you know, put my ISO on auto or put my ISO on a hundred or whatever, you know, um, just try to get yourself to relax first. You know, we all start yeah. somewhere and um, the people who asked you to do this asked you for a reason. Um, I always use this as an example, right? If you're familiar with my work, I shoot a lot of architecture. I shoot some nature stuff, but, but most of my work is architectural or fine art type stuff. Um, a friend of mine who I had met online several years ago, uh, her daughter dances for the Nashville City Ballet, and they're from the area here. And she's like, we want you to take photos of her doing, you know, dancing. And I'm like, I'm not a portrait person. <laughs> like, I don't, you know, this isn't what I do. I did take ballet, so I had that going for me because I knew at least I can know posing and I know steps and I know things that I could tell her to do that she would understand, you know. Um, but the, the woman told me, she goes, we're, that's exactly why we're asking you is because you don't do this and you do architectural work and it'll be a different than all the other people who take dance photos of her. And that's exactly what it was. Um, I was talking to a woman today who I met on a, on a photography workshop tour uh, several, several um, years ago and I've kept in touch with her and she um, she called me because she has a client who's looking for a photographer possibly in Chicago area she's like do you do commercial work I'm like well you know it depends on what it is you know if you need me to come in and set up and do lighting and all that well no but she knows she can call me because she follows my work still to this day and she recommends people to check out my work when she's trying to explain things that that are different right like I, I tend to have a different perspective or something like that so you know he got asked Michael got asked to do this because these people already know his work based on what he does so you know I mean these are typical headshots you know he was probably a little nervous I think you know, so just remember that the people are asking you to do this, not because you're like the cheapest person in town or whatever, but if they know you, especially they, they want you to do it for a reason. Um, and they have the yeah. confidence that they have the confidence that you can, even if you don't have that confidence in yourself, you know, this, like the woman I told today, I, I told her, I said, I'll take a shot at it. 
you know, I looked at what the product was. I looked at where it was and what, what, what it entailed. And I looked at what other people have done for it already. And I'm like, I should be able to do that with no problem other than my own, like, this isn't what I do in my head, you know? So it just doesn't hurt to try either. You know, I'm like, why not? Yeah. So, so the other thing, I don't know if you guys are interested or not. I thought I would do just a quick little like uh, demo kind of thing. I um, have had people ask me in the past about my architectural work and what I do and how I process it. And I can do a little quick thing on some images that I just shot last weekend or two weekends ago, whatever it was, um, that I, I think apply to not just my architectural work, it, it applies to a lot of things. Um, you know, I, I personally pay attention to a lot of details. Um, and I, I don't want this to be all about me. All of a sudden, I feel like I'm like, you know, <laughs> going on about my own stuff. But I just wanted to be able to, you know, give you guys something that's helpful in our in our hangouts here. Um, in the last minute, like, what am I going to do today? Because <laughs> we're not doing a presentation. So um if you guys would think that was helpful you know yes no if yes, you want to call it okay <laughs> otherwise we'll call it a day and it'll just be a short hangout about these two of it look see i just scrolled over something again and it did it again <laughs> it's so dumb i don't know why it does that close that right. panel <laughs> what i said close that panel well but if i'm i'm trying to do stuff you know i'm trying to do stuff anyway <laughs> it doesn't matter so uh let me see what i got let me pull up something just uh, this is one yeah this is one that i i did uh, i did already but let me this is the original okay so what my my um process is is i import into lightroom i go through first and um I mean, I don't really call like I don't go X out a bunch of stuff. I just go through and pick the ones I want to edit first. Um, this was one of them. I'm obsessed with these Jakarta trees. J Jaka Jakaranda. Yeah. Oh, my God. They were gorgeous. So okay. this up, up against that building was just like I was like, what? <laughs> so the first thing I do when I do this, though, is I go in and I told you I needed my camera cleaned. <laughs> is like bad all these spots some of them are on the building but a lot of them are dust spots so i took this into neo and let it do its thing um first and then after that it came out and there were still so i still had to do a lot of a little cleans ups but some of that is i get very picky when it comes to my architecture and i don't mean to be zoomed in this far so Oh, that's on my screen. I, I'm my screen is dying. So that that line right there is my monitor, not on the image. So like there's a dust spot, I would say. But here, like for instance, this tiny little line, which people may not notice. Um, but if you're selling fine art, um, I would go in and get rid of that. You know, I would finish cleaning up any spots that Luminar didn't fix. And that's the original, so they're all over there. But um, that's my second thing that I did. I lightened it up a little bit, um, increased the contrast. You can see over here, you know, kind of what I did. A lot of times what I do is wing down my, my presets to see what things kind of look like and what I might do or what I might like or what I don't like, you know. And it just gives you, you know, you might not use any of these, right? but it gives you an idea of what's possible with an image, you know? Um, it, might, it might spark you to be like, wow, I never thought that I would do something like that with this image, but that's kind of cool. And it might take you in a whole new direction, you know? Mm. So that's where I usually start. I straighten my stuff and I clean up all the spots. I clean up all the icky, icky whatever pieces because, you know, on architecture, there's like rain, drippings and you know all kinds of stuff like up here you can see this this which isn't that drastic but um and then this particular leaf right here i was like that's gotta go 
because it, it sticks out too much to me, this black um, leaf that was kind of in the shadows. So I went into Photoshop and got rid of that. So even just it's little things, right? So that's that's with this this here down here in the corner. And it's not horrible, but if you take it out, it just makes mm. it a little bit cleaner. Mm. Right? It's just a tiny little thing, mm. but it makes it that much cleaner. Mm. So those are some of the things that I, I do when I'm doing my architectural work. A lot of it is spot removal. A lot of it is, uh, um, I don't know if I can find one that uh, has, so uh, this might be a good one to look at. Um, a lot of times when you're shooting windows and reflections like this, mm. if you, this is huge. If you look and their lights are on inside the building, you get all these little lights that show up in the reflections. Mm. And I, I tend to go in and remove all of those when mm. I'm trying to, to clean things up because then it's just cleaner with, without those spot, without those lights in there. And when you're actually shooting this, you don't notice that, right? You don't mm. see those because you're more focused like on here on these reflections, which are really cool, you know, and then, and then you realize when you load it up, that there's lights on inside the offices and they're just little tiny distractions is all they are. So again, it, it's, um, I post my work to sell for fine art. So commercially people um, buy my work for like hospitals and, and things like that, you know, so they're large, you know, imagine, imagine blowing this up and all those little pieces would be showing, you know, even that is a little, you know, I might even just crop that out, you know, so it's not, you know, that I'm like just focused on those, which actually is better. <laughs> would you but leave that. the green? Would you leave the green in at the bottom left? No, then? probably not. Probably, probably not. not. Okay. No, I would probably, um, I would probably, because then, besides that, I would also crop up, so that I'm not leaving. Just you know, then it's more clean. So there's a little bit area down here of a window. I, I don't mm. think I've straightened this even yet. You know, that helps a little bit, but then I would just bring it up. You know, so you, you, you know, either leave a little bit down there or cut it at the windows totally. You know, but, but I would, I think I would definitely get rid of those. But it, it, again, it's little things I think sometimes that people don't always think about or pay attention to in their own images, right? We're all like, we all focus on the big picture a lot, and then we don't tend to, to see some of the smaller stuff. And, it, and it's tiny little things that can make big differences in images sometimes, even like even that portrait with with hairs, you know, the, the few little hairs on the black jacket, you know, it makes a big difference. But it's just taking the little extra time and that extra little step to, you know, with a fine tooth comb and uh, try not to, to, to get things in there that might take away from the overall image. But that's just a quick, you know, kind of thing, what, what I tend to do with my architecture stuff. Um, but I, like I said, it applies to pretty much anything, portraits and landscape and you know watch for things poking in the, the edges of your shot and watch for things poking out of people's head and <laughs> you know a lot of times in the moment you're not looking at those things you know mm -hmm. and i know i know i annoy people when i'm out shooting because i'm like no wait you got to move over a little bit that building's coming out of your shoulder you know like you know you just learn to be aware of that stuff mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. what about those in that um that building there with the blue squares on, on the windows do you this one get rid of that as well do i whoop. this Oops. no i probably wouldn't because those are those are um it looks like they're open or that it looks like they're panels in there okay and and that would be fart uh i don't think i would because that's really hard for me mm. <laughs> <laughs> i'm not a photoshop user much like I, I'm just gonna do this really funny quick. I could actually, it's not that bad. Um, I could maybe. Uh, 
I'd have to mess with them. That's not bad, actually, for a Lightroom spot removal or a mm. spot heal. So you you could, and it might, but they kind of add a little bit of a something interesting to this shot to me. Yeah. Now in this window, I don't know what's going on there. That's just a whole other reflection. Um, but that's the one thing, uh, at this particular Frank Geary building in LA is so reflective that you're, there's so many weird things going on that it might be hard to, to, to get stuff like that is gonna happen. Interesting. <laughs> I haven't looked at some of these yet, so. But hopefully that's helpful to you guys. Again, I, you know, we're just mm. kind of winging it today. So. Mm. Um, yes, thank you. I'm going to stop yes, my sharing. Thank you. Um, and if anybody has anything else, any questions, um, you know, I always ask if there's anything you guys would like to see in the community that's not there, um, let me know. And. Uh, the winning tax lotto numbers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's exactly right, Julie. All right. I'm going to share those. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Need the winning lotto numbers. <laughs> uh, but, you know, we're always open for suggestions if there's stuff you guys want to know about, or if there's anything in particular mm -hmm. you have questions about. Um, I can always finagle some other authors who have experience doing different things. You know, we mm -hmm. have we have authors who do all, all different types of things, events and weddings and portraits. And Julie does a lot of still life and macro and mm. all kinds of things. So, um, mm. you know, we have the resources for help in all sorts of areas. So anytime mm. anybody has questions, just throw them out there in the community. And and honestly, there's, there's a lot of people in the community who are quite experienced and very good at popping in and answering questions too, which is great. Mm. So... I find, I find this really encouraging and stimulating. So thank That's you. Good. <laughs> it's good. Yeah. I think that I think sometimes that and it's like it's kind of like, you know, our own photography, we get caught up in all the big stuff, right? We get caught up in, um, you know, what camera gear you have, and we get caught up in what software you're using. And sometimes we don't talk about the just the little stuff that is we learned a lot of things along the way as we did this, right? I mean, I've been doing, I've been, I've had a camera for almost 50 years, no, 40 years, 50, how old am I? Yeah, almost 50 years. <laughs> That's scary, what? very scary. You know, so I learned on film and stuff and I learned it by doing it. And then when digital came along, I was still shooting film and my, my husband bought me a digital camera and I was like, no, I was afraid of it. Like there's so many things that it does. I still have no clue all the things that my digital camera does because it does so much. It's overwhelming, you know? Um, and I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> Oh, but you're you're so wrapped up in all of it that you you kind of forget to just like it's still a camera. We're still taking photos, and you know, I try a lot of a lot of time, mostly because I hate edit. I don't really care to edit that much. I don't like spending time doing that. So you know, I shoot as much, and I think a lot of us do. Um, at least it seems like most of the people that are in my circle of photography friends would rather spend the time out shooting than spending it on the computer editing right so we do everything we can to get the shot in the camera um and that that involves clean getting your camera clean right i've cleaned mine several times obviously it's not good enough but i need to go take it somewhere and and the lens and just like get it done and start over again but because spending time cleaning up dust spots is ridiculous <laughs> Thankfully, it's easier, you know, than it used to be. But, but if you, you know, it's the, it's again, and and that's what I mean. I was, that's where I was going with this. It's the little things, kind of that that we all kind of learn and that we have learned as we've gone on over the years. But some of that stuff doesn't get shared, right? Because it's just little mm -hmm. things that you're like don't matter, you know. Mm -hmm. You people want to learn the bigger stuff. They want to learn how to do a mask, and they want to learn how to do layers, and they want to composite or you know whatever and then they don't they skip over some of the smaller things that make differences in your images as well that's my opinion though so <laughs> but anything that that you guys want that you'll find helpful you know let us know because i 
we'll rope people in to do presentations and uh, on all kinds of subjects, whether they want to do it or not. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Erin wanted to do this because really she was the only one that responded this time, you know, but um, I find it I find it a nice balance between doing these kind of hangouts where people submit images and we we didn't have a lot of time for submissions this time and then doing presentations so that there's a, you know, difference in what we're talking about every every month. So if nobody has anything else that they want to chat about. We'll call it a night if everybody's good call it a, call it a morning <clears throat> or yeah it's morning for you guys <laughs> all right thank you guys for joining us i appreciate you guys showing up and thank you so uh, much we'll see you Bye. next month next one all right okay. thanks thanks bye bye, bye. bye.